do? Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want, and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You want to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons? You can go to patreon.com slash Vids. We got a lot of good questions. Let's just get straight into it. First question came from my guy Adam, a.k.a. Phil. Shout out to you for being a patron too. Man. He said, now I know the playoffs have just started and free agency is a couple of months away, but I've had a thought in my head the last few days, so I need to ask your thoughts. With our secondary being around the bottom of the league when it comes to interceptions, uh, now when it comes to our roster becoming free agents, we got Tavon Young. Well, no, he still got time left on his deal. Um, so he's not going to be a free agent. Deshaun Elliott, though, yes. Anthony Averitt, like you said, yes. Jimmy Smith, oh, and he said, and Jimmy Smith probably retiring. Now, I know more importantly, both of our centers, Bradley Bozeman and Cologne Castillo, are free agents also. Not Cologne Castillo. Bradley Bozeman, for sure, but Cologne Castillo, no. Um, and he said, if you were EDC with the Ravens having around 20 million cap space at this time, would you sign Cologne Castillo, who would come at a cheaper price than Bozeman, and take a shot at signing one of these? Two top five ball hawking free safeties in the league. Honey Badger, uh, who is 29 years old, or Justin Simmons, who's only 28 years old. I'm pretty sure that Simmons is already signed. He's already set. Honey Badger is getting ready to be a free agent. Uh, Colon Castillo, he was an undrafted free agent. So he would be in exclusive rights free agent. Some like weird way that they got a deal. But he's, he's not going to be a free agent. So he's straight. We got Colon Castillo. Um, and he said, we need to rebuild, uh, our half of our secondary through the draft. Hope to hear your thoughts soon and thanks and take care. So this question, uh, I would be all for getting the honey badger. Now I know the Ravens, they, uh, they love, uh, Brandon Stevens and Brandon Stevens as the season went along, he, he got better and better. He got better and better. He was a prime example of getting better with more experience. But if they had the opportunity to get Tyron Matthew, and you like you, you, you got to feel like he would be more than willing to come through. I mean, especially if the money was right. But um, he would be more than willing to come through. And he is a playmaker. We need more playmakers. Guys that will make plays, especially on defense, especially getting interceptions. Because interceptions change games. I mean, we gave up enough of them, so we know how they change games. But to actually get some would be crazy. Like, we would be getting Marcus Peters back, and hopefully he will be coming back, like, the right way. Um, hopefully he can come back fully healthy, like, and no setbacks, nothing like that. But we anticipate getting Marcus Peters back. That's a playmaker, and we, you saw how much he was missed this season. Oh, it was so sad. Uh, but to add Tyron Matthew, and just, that would be like, that would be the best safety that we had since Ed Reed. He's no Ed Reed, but he would be the best safety that we had since Ed Reed. Because it's been a lot of, uh, ever since Ed Reed. And, and it's not fair to any of the safeties that we've had, because... It was Ed Reed, then it was Matt Elam, we had Eric Weddle, we had Earl Thomas, we had uh, Terrence Brooks, who I really liked, but I was so upset when he didn't give him a chance. The guy that they gave the opportunity instead of Terrence Brooks, oh, the safety, I forget his name, who came from the Texans. Oh, and I, I used to be so heated about that move by the Ravens. Oh, that, 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 when they did that, it had me so heated. But anyway, um, yes, I think they should sign him. I, oh, man, I would love that. And with Brandon Stevens, this ain't like you're going to take He's still going to be on the field a lot because even with Deshaun Elliott, who was our starting free safety, Brandon Stevens was still on the field a lot, even though he had a starting free safety. But you add a, a honey badger, and then, like, that would allow you to do more things. Um, and, and oh, yeah, because cause he can come and play the slot, too. He can come, come cover slot corners. He can... Covered tight end, he can't be too physical with him. But he he can he can do so much, and he's very versatile. And you know, Wink, the more you can do, because I mean, you, he he is a he is a free safety. But you know, Wink gonna send him on the blitzes. He said, "Hey, Honey Badger, go get him. Go go get the quarterback." Uh, but man, I and he got the smarts too. He got the smarts. 
He is a little cocky now, but he <laughs> he got the smarts. But he gonna talk. He gonna run his mouth. He gonna run his mouth. But Morgan Peters gonna run his mouth too. So we we need a little more swagger, especially on defense. On offense, we got it. On offense, I feel like we just need to get a little more tough. They need to get a little a little more tough up front. That offensive line, we need some guys that are just nasty. But defense, we need more swagger. We need more swagger back because uh, they certainly are missing that right now. So. A Marcus Peters and a Tyron Matt, oh, I, I will, I will love it. I love that previous question. Shout out to my guy Phil. Anyway, next question came from my guy Olu, and shout out to you for being a patron. He said, "What's up, sir? Again, I hope all is well with with your way." And shout out to the team, keep it clean, fam. Appreciate you. Love the platform for positive, uh, for Ravens talk. First off, man, I felt like a rock star to hear my question read. Oh no, it ain't nothing, man. I appreciate you supporting, and I appreciate you even sending the question in the first place, because if you ain't sending it, I wouldn't have had no question to read from you. Uh, but he said, so here's my second go at it. With Bozeman uh, having pretty much priced himself out, we'll see. We still got two months before free agency. So tick tock, tick tock. Uh, what free agent do we realistically keep? We don't make crazy splash moves over free agency. I would like to see a few contracts restructured like Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Peters, Tavon Young, and maybe Marlowe if possible. I would much rather make the splash on the offensive line and go young bulls on defense. Uh, I just remember Dak Prescott's first year. Their O-line was crazy dominant and their defense was trash. But because they controlled the time possession so well, the defense stayed fresh and finished the, the season top 10. If our O-line is dominant, it would leave eight in the box and man coverage on the outside where Bateman, Hollywood, and Andrews could eat. My Ravens group down here wants the coaches fired. I do think Roman can call better plays, but Lamar can do better sometimes in the execution of the play. Two things are true. A wink calls way too many blitz packages, but if we own the time of possession, then we would be fine. It all starts with the offensive line. We get that right, we win a championship with Roman. As always, thank you for what you do. From Louisiana, with much respect. Appreciate that. So, yes, the offensive line is of the essence. It's important that they build that thing the right way. Bradley Bozeman, he could walk. For Bradley Bozeman, it'd probably be smart if he walked. Uh, we hope the Ravens could keep him, of course. But if he walked, people are going to offer him more money than the Ravens would. The Ravens, I'm sure, would make him a top, top three paid center in the league but he could get he can get more elsewhere he can become the top paid center in the league if he goes somewhere else so it would be wise of him to check his options but if the ravens really want to keep him it would be wise of them to make a significant offer that compares to the top centers in the league it, it's up to you ravens whatever you want to do um, but like I've said before, um, if, if worst case scenario, if Bradley Bozeman walks, Tristan Colon could steal. I feel like he could fill in just fine. And I feel like they would be just fine. Um, he's shown in his limited experience at the center position. He can do it. He can do it. Uh, I feel like the, the more pressing need for the Ravens is tackles left and right tackle. Yes, we know Ronnie Stanley's supposed to come back, but how's he going to be back when he gets back? Will he be back all the way? And Patrick McCarry, they signed him to that extension, which is nice. That's not your final answer, though, at right tackle. You still need to get a right tackle. Hopefully, Juwan James, who hasn't played football in so long, you hope on that, but you can't bank on that. You need to treat the situation as if no Ronnie Stanley. You need to treat the situation as if no Juwan James. You need to treat the situation as Patrick McCarry, cool, but... That's not going to be our only and, and main option at right tackle. So I agree with you 1,000%. That offensive line needs to be built up badly so Lamar can have protection. Better throws can be made. Better decisions can be made. Better games can be played. And the Ravens just up their quality of football. Next question came from my guy Chris. He said, hey, Raven, hope all is well with you and the fam. And team, keep it clean. I've been thinking about Raven's salary cap and how can we bring in better players to help us moving forward. Please see the attachment and let me know your thoughts. God bless and stay warm. Well, we are down here in Florida, so yeah, we, we, we trying to do an right job of staying warm. Even though at night it gets really cold, 
at least for us, it, it's 51 degrees. <laughs> anyway, um, he sent me a screenshot of uh, some potential things that they could do, some potential ways that they could gain some cap. He said, uh, with signing Lamar Jackson to an extension, they could get 13 mil in cap. Uh, by releasing Villanueva, you gain 6 mil in cap. I thought it was less than that. I thought it was like 3 mil or something. Anyway, he said, by releasing Boykin, you, get, you save 2.54 mil. By releasing or restructuring Tavon Young, you could sign uh you could save oh save five point eight five mil. Uh by releasing or doing an extension with Peters, you could save potentially uh ten mil by a release. Or uh, an extension you save five mil or possibly more. Restructure with Stanley and Humphrey, you could save a little over six mil and seven mil with both. Um depending on what they did, uh yeah, and they, they could do a couple of those things like you uh like you listed. Um but for the guys that you mentioned, uh like a Ronnie Stan, I think they actually already restructured his deal. Um and you gotta be careful with those because you don't wanna just keep pushing money back, keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again, uh, because it's gonna come back to bite you. Um you don't wanna just you don't wanna do that. Well Lamar Jackson with an extension, okay, that's something that you can live with, obviously. Uh, releasing Villanueva, that's another thing you live with, obviously. Uh, with Boykin, um, I'm, I'm worried about Boykin going into next year. I just, um, I think that the the Ravens are going to end up trading him, though, man. I, I, I really do. Uh, and I just feel like um, it just, the relationship just didn't work out. Boykin's not a bad player. Um, it was just, it, it just didn't work out. So uh, I, if he goes somewhere where he can have a legitimate shot and a, a consistent shot, oh, he, he'll be straight. He'll be straight. But I, I just I don't envision him being with the team uh, next year, unfortunately. I, I wish it would have worked out, but it just it didn't. Uh, Tavon Young, that's an interesting one right there. I, um, I don't know what I expect the, the Ravens to do there with Tavon Young. He makes a lot of money. Um, he has missed a lot of time. He's a good player. Uh, but do you feel like you can get better there with somebody else? Um, do you go cheaper with like an Ardarius Washington being your slot corner? And it seems as if they were grooming Ardarius Washington to be the slot corner. Um, so that, that's, oh, that is such a, a, a tricky one right there. Marcus Peters, his value is crazy for the Ravens right now. Uh, we talked about him in previous question, but we know what he brings to this team as just, and his mind too. His mind, he he is so smart, and that that can't it, it's not talked about enough. And that's that's on me. I take responsibility for not talking about that enough. He is so smart, so smart. Um, Stanley, like yeah, he he can't he can't go nowhere. Um, he's locked in for a long time with the Ravens. Uh, Humphrey obviously ain't going away, but yeah, with the restructuring of Humphrey, yeah, I think they did that already too. But they would be doing it again and just kick it down the road again. But when you kick it down the road, if you did it with a couple of people, and I, they probably will, they always do. But if you did it with a couple of people, then it'd be like, okay, cool. Um, because the salary cap is gonna it's gonna keep going up. It's going to keep going up. So you could like sort of bank on that. But then you could think about too, like, man, salary cap is going to be going up. This money is already going to be taken away from our future salary caps. So it all just depends on how you look at it. Next questions came from my guy, Dominique. He said, oh, what's up, team? Keep it clean. Family, hope everyone is doing well and has a wonderful off season. Well, thanks for wishing us a well uh, off season because we are here a little prematurely, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, he said, this has been a stressful, mind-boggling, and unforgettable season for the Ravens. The chips started falling the wrong way in the beginning with the injuries, but we were still winning games. So I had hope, but then the chips fell completely. So with all that in mind, I think the players did all that they can to stay competitive in most of the games, but I see that coaching did didn't do his job. My question is, has this been the most disappointed you have been in the coaching since they uh since let's say the start of the 2008 season? Um probably probably uh because they yeah. I I I would I would think so. Because you just see so much like 
weird, tacky, crazy, questionable stuff going on. And no, the players weren't perfect. And of course, a lot of them were hurt and stuff. But you just, I feel like coaching just let them down this year. I feel like they let, they, they, they let them down. And that, it's just like, man, like, oof, I, I just didn't get it. Um, he also said, uh, I would start off by saying, can we stop the Huntley for Lamar talk? I wasn't pleased from the performance I saw from Huntley in the last game. Now I say he he with the short passes he got those down packed, but when it comes to the deep passes and throwing with some velocity, he doesn't command any of that. Uh, with that being said, I think our offense let us down again in the red zone. They make it so hard to get touchdowns when it matters the most, and it costs us the last two games. My question is, do you think Huntley has one look and then panics, or does that have to do more with the coach and not telling him to go through his progressions and then take off if need? B. No, I don't think he has one look, but I do think that he, when he sees somebody and, and he feels like, all right, I can get it to them, he makes that decision usually right away. Snap, read, decide, throw, just like that, and, and he does it right away. Um, it doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes he'll snap, read, oh, no, uh, okay, decide, then throw, but he, he makes his decision, so I don't think he's a one-read quarterback at all. But, yes, with the deep balls and the velocity, he certainly got to work on the both of those. Um, he also said, with the season in the books, I just wanted to get your take on a couple of things. Other than not making the playoffs, there have been some bright spots this season. People stepping up when their number was called and a couple of players showing what they can do when used correctly. So my question is, what were your noticeable bright spots from the team this season, and what would you grade the position groups? Uh, my second question is, how much is coaching – Going to the going to grade in the position groups. Oh man, we'll be all here all day if we if we graded the position groups. So we we did that another in another question. So we're not going to do that again because that's going to take too long. Um, but as far as some bright spots from the Ravens this year, um, I would say uh, Ty, Ty, L L L Lamar showing that even even with Lamar and all the stuff that he needs to work on, he is still winning and. With that being said, um, just imagine once he starts improving on those little things, and of course the offensive line is a lot better. To, you know what? One thing that's crazy, when it comes to coaching, so many people, when they talk about coaching, they'll be like, oh, well, can you really blame the coaches for this year? The coaches, all, all the players were hurt. Everybody was injured. Every, all these people were out. It's a bunch of people on the COVID list, this, that, and the third. So, okay. But when it comes to Lamar, they're always like, oh, man, Lamar, he threw, what, 16 touchdowns to, what, 13 or 12 interceptions? Oh, man, he threw so many interceptions this year. He kept turning the ball over this year. Man, Lamar, why he turn the ball over so, so much this year? Oh, he regressed. They don't ever talk about injuries when it comes to Lamar Jackson. They don't give him the injury pass. They give it to coaches, but not to Lamar. Something that was interesting. But anyway, um, like I was saying with Lamar, that, that, that was, that's a bright spot for me. The fact that he did, that, and there were some games where he, still, he was playing bad. Uh, but they, they would find ways to win, and he showed that clutch factor this year for sure. Um, Tyler Huntley, he was another bright spot too because he's somebody who came in and, and he did his thing. And he made some impressive plays. He got stuff to work on too, but not, not, bad, for a, not bad for a backup quarterback. Um... The wide receivers, they certainly improved. I wish the usage of them would improve too, but the wide receivers overall, they improved. Hollywood finally got his 1K. It should have came way before the last game of the season, um, but he did get it. Uh, Mark Andrews, he was the best tight end in the league this year, so that was a nice little bright spot. Um, what else? Uh, Devontae Freeman, as the season went on, he got more and more comfortable, so that was great to see. Ben Cleveland, I feel like he opened up the middle of the offensive line once he started starting, so that was nice. Patrick McCarry, uh, he did a lot better than I thought he would as a right tackle. Wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst because I was very scared when they put him there, but he did his thing. Uh, on, on defense, Brandon Stevens, just his progression as the season went along was nice. Um... <laughs> Defense, wow <laughs> Josh Bynes saved the day again uh, So, yeah I, that's, I don't really have too much um, just Seeing Chuck Clark, his, his smarts um, come through a lot of times 
uh, especially in the Rams game. That was everybody's favorite Chuck Clark game ever, um, which is understandably so because he got the two interceptions in the pick six where he just read it. And there was another game. I want to say it was the Steelers game where Chuck, he ch kept trying to put uh, Kevon Seymour. He told him where to go. He kept telling him where to go, and Kevon Seymour was just standing there. Chuck kept telling him where to go, and where Chuck was telling him to go, that's exactly where the ball went, and it was a touchdown. So Chuck showed, like, hey, I know some stuff too, man. Come on. Like, but So, yeah, I, I would say those, um, those are the bright spots uh, that I saw. Uh, in the last part of his question, he said, uh, with our offseason starting, there's some free agents that may walk. With that being said, if you could, if you could barring money, uh, who would you keep and why? Um, Bradley Bozeman to just give consistency uh, to the offensive line. Um, Anthony Averett uh, to give us more help in the secondary. Uh, who else? Deshaun Elliott as just depth. Uh, who else? And yeah, Brandon Williams just as depth. But and I say all these people because you said, but so you said not if we weren't worried about money, if we weren't worried about money. I said I'd probably bring most people back. But yeah, definitely those. Shout out to Graven.